welcome to this tutorial on how to make realistic renders for your created superstars in WWE 12. On behalf of Community Creations, I'm Pechu, and today I'll be guiding you through all the steps you need to help you create a render similar to those used by the game. Unfortunately, this render hack only works for the Xbox 360 and does not work on the PlayStation 3. For this tutorial, you will need Adobe Photoshop with NVIDIA DDS plugins as well as Xbox hacking portals, WWE 12 Creator Wrestler Editor. As an example, I'm going to create renders for TNA's Kurt Angle. To begin with, you want to find a large, high quality picture which will be suitable to use. A very useful website to look on is psddreams.de. This site is home to thousands of images ranging from wrestlers to celebrities. Everything is categorised too, which makes it super easy to find a certain person. High resolution pictures are also easy to identify, as are HQ icons underneath their thumbnails. Make sure your picture is near enough full length as this will ensure better results. Once you've found your picture, save it to a destination that you remember. I'm just going to save it to my desktop as that's one of the easiest places. After the picture is downloaded, open it up with Adobe Photoshop. You want to crop the image just below the waist so that it matches the sizing of the in-game renders. Take your selection tool select the area you want to delete, like so. Once this is done, hit delete. Then, go to image, trim, and select based on transparent pixels. Now, we want to double the height of the image. This may look strange, this has to be done to ensure that it is the right size for when it gets transferred to the game. Go to image size and locate your height dimension, which should be in pixels. Make sure constrained proportions is unchecked as well. Multiply the height figure by 2 and click OK. Once you've done this, minimise this screen for now and go to File and New. Make sure the dimensions of this new canvas are 256 by 512 pixels. This will be the size of your actual render. Now, Go back to your other window and drag and drop the original picture into the new canvas. Once you've done this, hit Ctrl and T to use a transform tool and resize it until it fits the entire canvas. Position this picture roughly in the middle and delete any layers that are behind it for now. Once this is done, we can begin the actual editing process for the picture. Open up Image, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. The only value you want to play around with here is the saturation. You want the skin to lose some of its colour like the real renders do. Once this is done, duplicate the layer. On the top layer, apply a Gaussian Blur filter with 1.5 pixel radius. Then, set this layer to Overlay. You want to play around with the opacity here until you're happy with the amount of emphasis on the light areas. Now you can play around with the saturation again to get your final colouring. The final touches consist of using the sharpen tool on the facial features as well as on any design on the attire to make them stand out. Then, take your lasso tool at 20 pixel feather and select the lower part of the image. Go back to the hue and saturation window and decrease the lightness by around 90 to get a black fade effect. After you have finished this, create a new layer and flood it with black. Make sure this layer is behind your render. Hold control and click on the render layer in the layers window. This should select your whole image and a dotted line should appear around the outside. Now, go to Select, Save Selection and hit OK. To deselect the render, press Ctrl and D. 
The next step is very important as this is what makes your render transparent in game. Go to the channels tab of the layers window and check the alpha channel. Once this is done, go back to your layers tab and flatten the image. There should only be one layer now. Once these steps have been completed, you are now ready to save your image. Go to file, save as and choose a suitable destination. Make sure the alpha channels box is ticked and the file type is set to DDS. Once you click save, another window should appear. Make sure all the settings are the same as those shown in this video. You want the DDS to be DXT5 with no mitmaps. If you want to create a mini render for the headshot, make a separate 128 by 128 pixel canvas. Once you've done this, go back to your original full render and resize that to 256 by 256 pixels. This will make it proportionate. Now, simply drag and drop that into the 128 canvas and repeat the steps to retain the transparency on the background. Once all your renders have been created, it is now time to import them into your save data. If you haven't already transferred your files from your Xbox, make sure you do so now. If you are unsure on how to do this, there are plenty of tutorials out there, whether you are using a USB stick or an export hard drive device. The biggest tip I can give you when it comes to game data is to make plenty of backups, just in case anything goes wrong. Now, open up Xbox Hacking Portal's Creator Wrestler Editor tool and locate the Creator Superstar file you want to add the render to. In this case, I'm going to apply it to the D's Bobby Lashley, as I do not have a Kurt Angle. Once the Creator Superstar file is open, hit the special icon and choose Import Selection Picture. Then, select your full and mini DDS files and they will appear in the preview window on the right hand side. Please note, you have to do this for each attire slot. Once you have imported the renders, hit Save and then Save To. This saves it to your SaveData.dat. After the save process has been completed, your files are now ready to go back on your Xbox and you can enjoy high quality, realistic renders in WWE 12. That's it for this tutorial and I would just like to say a big thank you to Brian J who made this exploit possible in the first place.